Hi, y'all. It's been a long minute, hasn't it? It's been 10 months. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you where I've been and where, what's going to go on with the channel, where I'm headed with the channel. But this video is about these new generation Eve lithium iron phosphate cells. I got a call from Jenny Wu asking if I wanted to test these new cells. And I'd heard a little something about them and I was really excited to test them. I, uh, they, they are claimed to have a lot more energy density, a lot more power within the cells. They're about the same size. So I, had, I said, sure, she sent them to me and I tested them and uh, they came in these legal, legal UN boxes. I've seen that from Jenny Wu before. I haven't really seen it from others, but that's probably kind of cool. And they showed up from UPS instead of FedEx. That's also really cool. Um, inside, they had the typical copper, tinned copper bus bars with the serrated nuts, but they've got uh, shrink wrap on them. But they also came with these plastic separator sheets that are cut to size to fit the batteries. And this is great. I've been buying these thin cutting board sheets from Amazon, and I've probably answered the question a hundred times for people wanting to know where I, what I use in between the cells. And we have to buy those things and cut them into the right size. And this is nice. Really like that. And then... They, they came packaged as well as I've ever seen, uh, and they have little isolators on them, little insulators on them. They're super flat, pristine. Uh, there's not a blemish on any of them that I've seen, and, and they're flat. Not mostly flat, but like flat. That's pretty good. The pricing is better than what we've seen in the past. These are, these are, there's two generations, there's two different models. There's the MB30s, I tested four of them here, and the MB31s, I tested four of them over here. And they are only a dollar a piece in price, basically the same price. $69, $70 before shipping from China, so you have to add shipping to wherever you are, but that's still gonna get them to you cheaper than any of the decent cells, decent quality cells that we've purchased in the past. And then they're supposed to be 306 amp hours and 314 amp hours. That's, that's big, except they didn't test that. They tested way above that. So the 306 amp hour cells, rated cells, they tested at 332.7, 332.2. 333.1 and 334.5. The 314 amp hour cells tested at about the same, 330.8, 330.7, 330.7, and 331.0. What really stands out about that to me is how almost exactly the same they are in capacity. These are huge capacities, big numbers, and they're all within three tenths of an amp hour in the testing of these. Now, I test all this, I, I charge with the power supply and I test all these with, these, with this EBA40L uh, tester from ZTEC, I, I, this uh, 40 amp tester that I've been using for the hundreds of cells that I've tested and, and uh, put together into these uh, batteries that I've built over the last few years. Now, uh, if you want to buy these things, my go-to is Jenny Wu. Uh, she works with Dokon Technologies, but she is a gem. I've been working with her almost three years now. Contact her directly at her email at JennyWu896 at gmail.com. You can... If you contact Docon, you know, I, I, I don't know what the, what the experience you'll have 
with someone else. I know that the experience that I have had with Jenny Wu has been great, and I have gotten lots and lots of uh, thanks expressed to me on the channel from people who I connected with her. She just works really hard. She does a really good job of representing you with her company and making sure that you get everything you need taken care of. And if there's any minor hiccups, she gets it taken care of. So that's what you gotta, that's what you want when you're dealing with a company from China. Uh, there's, it's not an undeserved reputation that dealing directly with companies in China uh, has developed. And Jenny Wu makes me feel really comfortable about doing it. Now she also, uh, in the last few videos that I did before I went on my video making hiatus, I built, they've got a box, a, you know, a metal box that comes, that, that contains the cells and comes with a third generation Seplos BMS, 200 amp BMS. And I built one of those and it works great. I really like it. More on that in just a second. Um, here's the deal. Oh, she did tell me that Eve uh, is in short supply of the 306 amp hour MB30 cells until late in this year. Not just with her company, but with other companies as well. So there's a limited supply. You might get some of those you're more likely to have good uh, supply of the MB31s. Now, the test results are about the same and the price is about the same, even though they're supposed to be rated at eight amp hours more, they actually tested at a couple of amp hours less, but they tested really consistent. I kind of wonder if that doesn't, that leads me to believe that they might have more consistency going forwards um, as far as retaining the test results that I got. But we won't know until we test over time. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, also, they've changed the way that they uh, rate the cycle ratings on these. They used to say that they would go 1800 cycles and they went to 3000 and they went to 4000 and they went to 6000 cycles and now they're saying 8000 and 10000 cycles but they're saying at a 70% uh, discharge now it, it really doesn't matter to me uh, when you get into numbers that high and most of the time we're not discharging 100% anyway you have to have like in my system, you have to have several days of cloudy weather before that becomes a factor. And um, so the number of times that I'm going to discharge below 70% is going to be very, very few. And these cells will calendar age out and we'll go to a different technology long before that cycle life is ever going to come into play. Um, all right, so I want to tell you now about what's been going on. If you followed my channel and you watched the last few videos I made, you know that last year I had a surgery to this ankle. It was a pretty serious surgery and I had a long recovery. Uh, it was six months before I could really get around on it. And during that time, I dropped something on my other foot accidentally and I broke it. I didn't know it was broken until six months later and it was still hurting. And then I knew, well, that just wasn't a bruise. That was, I must have had a fracture. And so now that, the, both of those things healed up. I did not tell you about the surgery that was before that one. And if you look back at some of those videos, you might see that I wasn't my normal self. I was in a lot of pain and it was a really serious surgery and I'm not going to go into what it was all about, but uh, I survived it and it's all, it's all behind me now, but as you get older, you find out where the weaknesses were and you have to get them taken care of. Take care of yourself, y'all. And uh, when, you, when you have something that's, 
bothering you, go get it checked out. Don't wait too long. So anyway, I'm uh, I'm back in business now. There's a there's a lot of uh, activities that I do that are really active activities. I ride long rides on bicycles. I do really long scuba dives. I uh, I've a year and a half ago I got back into motorcycling in a big way. That had been a really important part of my younger days, and I got back into that. But most important of all is I started a relationship with horses that I had always wanted to have, but I never had the time for. And I knew that I couldn't do it until I had time to really devote to it. And I, um, I have gotten into riding horses in the style of the Vaqueros, of the of the the vaqueros in California in the late 1800s, early 1900s that rode, that rode those huge open ranges, uh, driving cattle and and <clears throat> those those vaqueros had to have a relationship with their horses where the horses counted on them and they counted on the horses. If they had a, a a relationship where they got the horse to do what they wanted by bullying the horse, then the horse just had to escape and they were on foot. And so they built relationships with the horses where the horses came to count on them and they understood the horse and they they gelled as a unit. And that's what I've always wanted and that's what I that's what I'm developing with uh, a couple of horses right now and it's really amazing. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to travel around and ride in different parts of the country. So we bought an old horse trailer that has a living quarters and stalls for four horses so that we can take the horses to Montana or Missouri, Arkansas, New Mexico, ride in different places. Well, this trailer has you know the it's like a, a little uh travel trailer it's got a generator and it's got propane and it's got air conditioning and cook stove and refrigerator and all of that it's got a 12 volt system to run the lights and stuff when you don't have power you can plug it in and all that it's, it's more complicated than a house actually but what it doesn't have is it doesn't have a big 110 volt battery system and so I'm really excited I'm gonna to have to contact Jenny Wu and I need eight more of these cells and another one of those big uh, one of those big 48 volt boxes because that would be perfect for putting into this trailer I've got a place underneath the the cooktop that could slide in underneath it and put a hang a inverter on the outside next to the spare tire and then when we're boondocking when we don't have a place to plug in or when we're traveling we can still have air conditioning and power and all that stuff without having to run the generator and then if the generator does get turned on it can use its excess capacity to charge the batteries back up so that it only has to run for a few hours and then it can be shut back off it's ideal and it's got me really excited now why haven't I made any videos in the last 10 months only thing I was doing that I was really excited about was stuff I didn't think y'all would be excited about and, and I'm sure some of you are but most of the people that come to this channel want to know about batteries they want to know about building efficient buildings that allow them to be off-grid and they want to learn about how to make all of that safe build good connections and and that's what built that channel. You know, I, I started to do this stuff and I wanted other people to learn what I learned. So I put together the channel to just share that information with people. And it became more popular than I imagined. And so I haven't been doing anything like that in the last 10 months. And so I haven't felt like I don't want to make videos just to make videos. I'm not about building the channel. I'm not about making money on YouTube. Um, 
if you contact Jenny Wu and you tell her that I sent you, she's going to make sure that I get a small commission. If you don't tell her I sent you, then she'll just sell you the sales for the same price anyway, and I won't get a commission. And that's fine with me too. I'm retired. I don't need the income. What I do, I do this to pass on the knowledge that I have to try to help other people get their energy independence and and be able to store the energy that their solar panels are creating so that when the power goes out, their solar panels can continue to operate. And that's the whole point of this whole deal is, you know, if we have a, you know, we just had a, a small Carrington event where we didn't lose the grid, but a Carrington event like we just had where all the, the northern lights were happening all the way down into to Texas, uh, that kind of event can happen at any time. We're still at a solar maximum. It could happen again next month or next week. And then when it does, it could be devastating to the grid depending on how it's focused on us and how it hits us. They actually can't explain why it didn't cause more disruption than it did. The one that happened in 1859 would have shut down our entire grid. There would have been nothing we could do about it. So, you know, I'm kind of I don't like to call myself a prepper, but I kind of like to be prepared for those kinds of things. And um, I want to help y'all to be prepared as well. So that's why the video. That's why no videos before. That's where I'm headed now. I really hope that I can go ahead and get a battery built. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to incorporate it into your boondocking travel trailer, van, what have you, because um, there's ways of putting that together so that it works and doesn't take up too much space and isn't a danger to you. So that's all I've got for now. Hope to see you again soon. You know, hit the subscribe button and all that other stuff we say. Take care. Bye-bye.